So, you're looking at this, and you're wondering, what do I do now, Leo from the PC Security Channel? Don't worry, in this video we will talk about everything you can do to decrypt your files after a ransomware attack. If you're lucky enough and your files possibly aren't encrypted yet, check out our full guide on how to deal with a ransomware attack which is widely viewed and well received. Link in the description. But now we have to deal with this unintelligible gibberish which used to be our important data. Now most ransomware will tell you that there's no way to decrypt your files without paying the ransom, but of course that isn't always true. So to kick things off, let's talk about what encryption essentially is. It is basically the process of encoding the data that you have in a different language, one that can only be understood by someone who possesses the key that was used to encrypt your data. So one way you can decrypt your files is by having the key. Now it is also possible to decrypt your files without the key by a method which involves brute force, but we'll talk about that later. First, let's talk about the two scenarios where we might be able to recover the key. Now in this case uh, we're looking at the ransomware jigsaw. This is a fairly old variant, almost historic at this point, but it will serve for the purposes of demonstration. So as you can see, like most ransomware, it tells you that your files are encrypted and there is no way to get your data back. But if we try and analyze the actual ransomware executable, with dnspy, which is going to allow us to decompile it and try to read parts of the source code, you will see that we've got a program called Bitcoin Blackmailer here. And if we open it up, you can see we've got a main function and under that we've got different forms, but most importantly, we've got a config. And if we go ahead and open that, as you will see, we've got the product title, which is Firefox. That's what this masquerades as. We've got the encryption file extension, Dot fun. We know the max file size to encrypt in bytes. And then what do we have here? The encryption password. And there you go. That's a static key, which means the key that was used to encrypt your files in this case is hard coded within the actual ransomware executable. So as long as you have the executable, you have the key and voila, we can use this to decrypt your files. Now, obviously just having the key is half the battle you still have to write a decryptor using it to translate this into this. Thankfully, you don't have to do this yourself. There are lots of excellent resources where you can find publicly created decryptors that will allow you to get your data back for free. Some include the No More Ransom project, but for this example, we're just gonna look at MCSoft's decryption tools because I genuinely believe that this is one of the best and easiest ways to go through with this. All you have to do is upload an encrypted file or the ransom note. So we'll just select our data, click on open. And once we hit the upload button, we will get a result. And in this case, it has identified the ransomware as jigsaw. And as it says, the ransomware is decryptable. Now this is the absolute best case scenario. And if this is what you see, it's your lucky day. All you have to do is click for more information and you can go ahead and download the decryptor directly. And once we have that, we can go ahead and run it, select our folder and click on decrypt. And boom, as you can see, our pictures are restored. But this is rarely going to be the case for most modern ransomware, especially if it's a targeted attack. So now we'll move on to the next method. We can potentially find a key. Now, assuming your system is still running and the ransomware is active, you might be able to get a system memory dump. For a specific process, you can do this simply by going into something like Process Hacker and select Create a Dump File. Once this is done, you can go ahead and use some kind of hex editor to open it. And now you have all the data that the process was actually using in memory. If you're lucky, again, this might include some strings that might be useful in the process of decryption. For example, again, if it has some kind of a static key, this is where it might show up. Now, obviously at this point, we're getting into advanced forensics. You might even need to look at a complete system memory dump using something like the volatility suite. But again, if you're desperate for your data, this is an option to consider. 
Now, obviously, this is not always going to work. For example, if the ransomware uses RSA or asymmetric encryption, there will be a public key for encryption and a private key for decryption. So even if you find the public key, all tough luck, because it won't really help you get your data back. Now, let's assume both these methods have failed. Our ransomware is quite resilient and it has left no traces in memory or otherwise. That leaves us with only one option, and that is to use brute force, which is exactly what it sounds like. Breaking in through the door. Well, not exactly. In computational terms, it means trying every single combination of characters that could represent the key. Unfortunately for you, however, if the ransomware has implemented a modern encryption method successfully, such as AES-256 or RSA, you will need more energy than the sun can provide in its lifespan, and more time than how long the universe has existed to try all the possible combinations required. So you've literally got the laws of thermodynamics against you. But wait, that's assuming ransomware developers don't ever make mistakes, which is far from the truth. You see, the encryption algorithm itself might be secure, but its implementation within the ransomware program may have several flaws. For example, they might be using a random number generation process that is somewhat predictable. Let's say they use system time. That way, if you know what time the encryption event occurred, you might be able to narrow down the possible outcomes. There are lots of pseudo random number generators and sometimes even small flaws with regards to how the key was generated can vastly narrow down the number of combinations you have to brute force to actually get the key. Now, if you're able to find any such metadata with regards to how the original encryption process was performed, what kind of seeding process was used, you might actually be able to brute force your way through with some powerful hardware. There you go, you have an excuse to buy a GTX 2080 now. If you're able to decrypt your files, great. If not, well, at least you can play some games, right? I guess until that is encrypted too. <laughs> but anyway, there you have it. Those are pretty much all your options. Of course, I cannot stress enough that prevention is the best way to protect yourself from ransomware. And by the time your data is encrypted, you're already fighting a losing battle. Very high cost, low chance of success, as Gimli says in Lord of the Rings, what are we waiting for? <laughs> but seriously, if you're a home user and the first option I mentioned doesn't work out, your best bet might just be to reformat your system. But if you are a business and it's something mission critical and you're even considering paying the ransomware authors, you can consider these professional options. Now, the MCSoft decryption page also has a form that you can use to get in touch. It's a brief questionnaire and depending on your situation, they might be able to help. Sometimes, even if you pay the ransomware authors, you will get a decryption tool that either doesn't work or won't help you restore your organization in a timely manner. And again, that's where some of these methods can vastly reduce the time and headache that you have to deal with when it comes to decrypting your files. But again, I will stress that if you can help it, Anything that does not involve paying the ransomware authors is always preferable. I know it's probably not what you're hoping for. Maybe you're hoping there's a magic formula, but this is the science. And I think it's much better to have an understanding of your actual options rather than shooting in the dark and potentially falling prey to more scams that pretend that there's an easier way around this. So there you have it. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like and share if you did. Don't forget to subscribe to the PC Security channel for more awesome cybersecurity content. This is Leo. Thank you so much for watching. And as always, stay informed, stay secure.